Hi, hello, good morning everybody. Good morning. So it's 2024, so hopefully you guys had a good transition into the new year. Um, mine was really subtle, um, but that's okay, because that's where I'm at in life right now. Um, but Nikki uh, contacted me end of last year to be like, hey, you're interested in speaking? And I'm like, yes. Because basically, I've been coming to Creative Mornings for a little over a year now, and um, every time I'm here, I always meet somebody new, I get inspired by the speakers that are here every month, and I'm always on this side, being the receiver of things and you know, being inspired and hearing stories, and so I'm excited because, first of all, I get to kick off 2024 for Creative Mornings Dallas. Happy New Year. And I get to give you those inspirations and insights and share my story. So I'm on this side now today. Um, so I'm super excited. Um, and obviously the, the theme of the, the day, well, the month, I guess, is rise. And so I had to do a little bit of digging because I was like, well, intuitively, I knew that I had, you know, in my life, in my story, I had themes or I had um, synergy with this term as far as reflecting it in my life um, but I wanted the data I wanted to be like okay what's the proof you know show me the proof because I'm also a little bit of a scientist so I had to do my research so I looked up what rise meant okay so rise there's a ton of definitions surprisingly I didn't realize um, so I was scrolling and scrolling and picking the ones that really resonated with me so obviously, like rising, you can move from one lower position to a higher one. We all kind of know that, right? Also, rising above something, so not being restrained to something, a limited environment, something with constraints. Also, being restored to life, so activating, right? Rising from the dead, like a zombie, good or bad, I don't know. And then also rising to a challenge, so getting enough strength and ability to respond and face a challenge head on. It's exciting. Um, you know, obviously becoming higher, continuously ascending, and there's also that one of my favorites is increasing in size, number, quantity, so my voice is rising, woo! Or rising tides, right, the rhythm. And one spirits rises when, when you're in a situation that something makes you happy. And so all of these, honestly, like the whole theme of this or the whole um, kind of common denominator, if you will, is just really the act of becoming more, becoming something greater, becoming something more expansive. The act of becoming something more, you know? And really, with rising, you know, we're all on our journey of becoming ourselves, especially as creatives. I think we have that internal drive to be something more, to do something more, show up in a certain way that really resonates with us. Um, but we all have a decision to do that, and it all starts with one little initiation point that we have to be the decider of the rising process. We can't just, it's not something that just happens to us, right? So we have to start that fire in our belly, right? And so, yeah, that vision of the phoenix that we often think about when we're rising is, oh yeah, it's so glorious, like this magical, mythical bird comes and it's flapping its wings. And it's so beautiful, but we also forget that there's a whole process behind it where how did it feel to bust through that rock and bust through and, and catch on fire a little bit? You get burned, you get scraped, you get bruises. And sometimes we forget that there's that ugly process to that whole beautiful process, right? So I kind of wanted to focus on that, kind of the icky bits of rising, um, but it still ends with the, the same result of something becoming something more and something more of yourself. So, who am I? Why am I here? Why am I talking? What's my story? Right? So, formally, I like to introduce myself like, oh, I'm Emmy, and I'm a creative entrepreneur, I'm a movement artist, this is my resume, look at me, I'm awesome, you know, I do things, I speak, I educate, I'm, fa I'm faculty at UNT. <laughs> um, I also host and um, host my own workshops, whether it be around movement or mindset and business. <laughs> Um, all of these things, I'm really passionate about arts entrepreneurship because that means artists are empowered to do the craft that they're supposed to do. Um, I'm all of these things. I'm a busybody, <laughs> which is, I think, very typical for us, right? But, oops, who 
really am I? Like, who is the Emmy that is a human being, first and foremost? Well, I, this, this title, one of the identifiers, this one actually um, took me a while to really embody for myself. Um, again, me on this process of rising to become more of me. Um, but I'm an artist. I am an artist. I see the world differently. I move in this world differently. And so this is a fun little project that I did like three years ago where I wrote my name in different ways. Um, just because, again, it was kind of my process of becoming me and claiming my space, claiming, hey, I'm Emmy and I'm okay. I'm here in this world, I'm doing stuff, you know? So that's a little fun thing. But also, what other identifiers? I'm gonna stand on this side. Well, I'm a mom, so there's a picture of me and my son. Oh, does this have a, Never mind. we don't need to do that. Um, I'm, a, I'm a wife, my husband was gonna come here, but he's sick. Ugh, a lot of us are kinda sharing germs right now. Um, I'm a lover of travel, I am a lover of learning. Um, here's me in Rome after I heard the Pope speak and on Christmas day, I spent New Year's there too, like that was like three years ago. Um, here's me in the mountains of northern India, living life, you know, here's my so cat mom. That's Rai, little Rai girl. I also have alopecia, um, an autoimmune disorder, right? So that's why I don't really have a lot of hair on my head. Um, but yeah, all of these things, like this is my rich life. And I love who I've, who I've become, who I'm becoming. Um, I calculated this recently, but I have lived in 15 cities, four countries, and three continents. And I'm like, man, what a cool life I have. Like this process of living this life to becoming who I am today. Like little Emmy was not that at all. Not this expansive, beautiful creature that you see today. And I actually was a really small child. I was like, yes, petite by nature, but like I felt like I had to be limited and keep myself safe and that I needed to be small so that I was, you know, okay, right? I couldn't take up space and I didn't use my voice. And that's what I thought I had to do in my, my role in my family, right? So here's little Emmy, adorable as she is. She was so quiet. She was like a shell of Emmy. Um, and it took me such a long process to overcome those barriers and be, be, being able to take up space to who I am now. Like, woo, let's go. Long hair, don't care. But to no hair, don't care. You know, that's a process too. So today I I'm really excited because I get to share some lessons with you guys about what I learned on my journey of rising. And hopefully those, you know, speak to you. You can use none of them. You can use all of them. You can use whatever, right? But I'm here to share and give to you today. So. What are the three lessons? I'm such an educator, look at me, right? So examine and rewrite the story about yourself is the first lesson. The second one is embracing when the formula fails. And the last one, simple, move. So first lesson, examine and rewriting the story about yourself. So I briefly described my early roots. So little Emmy, I am biracial, well, I guess multiracial um, human being. My father's Japanese, my mom is the descendants of Irish Hungarian immigrants to America. So I'm a whole slew of things. And my mom met my father in Japan, they got married, and sadly they had a lot of problems. Um, there was a lot of chaos in my home. My, my parents had a lot of conflict, they were arguing constantly. A lot of er my early memories were just us moving around a ton. We had to relocate and live with my aunt for a bit. There was um, restraining orders, you know, physical abuse, verbal abuse. We lived in some battered women's shelters for a bit too. And all of this, I mean, I thought I was normal, right? This is what I'm supposed to do in life. Um, I even remember uh, when I lived with my aunt, I would see a counselor. I would be pulled out from class and I would see a counselor. Um, and I just thought it was cool because I was missing class, but little did I know that I was, you know, a, a, a case, a child case of sorts. And so again, I kind of mentioned how like my role in my family was to be the quiet, good, well-behaved one, right? And so what I did to like not cause any waves, I. I had a lot of moments where I would just run away to closets and I would hide there and I would stick my face in my parents' clothes and I would just try to like close my eyes and like 
be as far away from the chaos and conflict that was outside as much as possible. And, you know, that's just what I did to try to protect myself. Um, and so the thing is that, you know, I, even as an adult, I would say this story over and over to people, even through therapy and like having conversations with people and, you know, there would be judgment on that. I'd be like, ooh, Emmy's weak because she's reacting to something and walking away from something, right? And being like, ooh, like Emmy's little, like just hiding, you know? But I had to really look at that story and be like, wait a second, this isn't helping me. This is helping me stay small and like contain, stay contained in my story, right? But I don't want that for my life. So I had to rewrite this story that I was saying over and over again. And I started looking at it through a different lens and I was like, oh, you know what? I actually had power in that moment. Little Emmy actually had power because she made an intentional decision to move towards something that she felt was gonna keep her safe, that she thought was going to keep her, give her peace in a moment, you know, that was chaotic outside. And so that story felt so much better and served me so much more because like, oh, wow, Emmy, little Emmy, I thought she didn't know herself, but she actually does know herself and what she needed and she made an intentional decision, little Emmy, to go towards something that served her. And so I ask you guys, like, what kind of story are you guys telling yourselves that isn't serving you as far as your own life story, you know? I mean, a common one is like, maybe you got a divorce and Okay, so like that period to that sentence is like, it didn't work out, it didn't work out. Or you can say, okay, let's write a new story about this. Actually, this is the beginning of a new chapter, a new opportunity for me to start something fresh or to know myself more in a totally different way. Ooh, that's exciting. That's way more exciting than being like, oh, that's the end of that, right? Or maybe, you know, new year, new you kind of, you're not really feeling your body right now, you're not pleased with it, right? It could be more whatever, <laughs> weight less, I guess, right? But instead of just being critical of your body, like celebrate the fact that you have one, like people don't have that privilege sometimes. Like you all got up, you got here, you got your coffee, you get to drink, you get to eat, you get to talk to other people and be inspired, like that's a gift. Like this is your vessel that you get to experience the world in, so that's pretty cool, right? So how does that narrative feel? Celebrating your body instead of bashing on it, right? So again, re-examining and rewriting the story that you say about yourself, it's up to you to do that. Next lesson. <laughs> Everybody taking notes? <laughs> Just kidding. Embrace when the formula fails, okay? So here's me, right about when I was about to get married. That's 23-year-old Emmy. Look how little she is. Um, but yeah, embracing when the formula failed. So I kind of described to you that I was a very good child. I was so good. I was raised in a Christian home. I was like going to church every day, youth group every day. You know, I saved myself for marriage. That's probably one of the rare ones. Um, I like was doing everything to a T, didn't do drugs, didn't drink until like it was of age. And like, I also was a good Asian daughter. My father was like, you need to get a good job. I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a dentist. So I was like, okay, even though I loved dancing, I was like, I'm gonna go study biology and become a dentist. Not happening, right? That didn't happen. But anyways, so I, I was so externally motivated by what everybody else was saying that I needed to do because again, I had to keep the peace. I had to appease everybody. People pleaser, disease to please. And so, I found myself studying biology. Um, I thought I was gonna get a job right out of college, which I did, um, but I ended up getting married because I was dating a Christian man, so I got, ended up getting married because I was like, well, what else are we supposed to do? <laughs> you know, we're two Christians and we date, so the end result is marriage, right? So we got married. <laughs> um, this is the formula that I really thought, I truly thought that I had to get a good education, get a good job, find a godly man, get married, have kids, have a house, bing, bang, bang, success forever, right? That was what I literally was programmed to believe. And then, so after we shortly got married um, at 23, we moved to Seattle um, across the country. We were living in Pennsylvania and we <laughs> had a lot of issues, honestly. 
Um, and taking responsibility over my part in the relationship, I is because I didn't know myself. I was listening to everybody but me. And so like, how was I supposed to show up in a relationship where you're supposed to be equals? And I had no idea how to even understand what I needed, first of all, and then communicate what I needed to my partner. So there was a lot of issues. So we were in a new city, family was not around, new job, new life. There was a lot of conflict, and all that conflict came to a bubbling head, and we ended up splitting up. Splitting up. We, I divorced. I divorced. I'm a divorcee. Um, so at 27, I was in a new city. I, um, you know, was like, what the heck? <laughs> What the heck? Like, I was following the formula to a T. Like, this cannot happen. It's like the rug got pulled up from under my feet, and I was like, oh, uh, what now? Well, I had to examine and rewrite the story. I had to rewrite my formula. I embraced it as a new opportunity to do something different. So I was like, okay, obviously the formula, the formula did not work. So what's my formula now? And I wrote one that basically was all about me chasing my joy. So I was dancing this whole time, so I leaned more into dance. I started dancing more. Here's me teaching at a studio in Seattle. I started a um, performance team for, as an offshoot, offshoot of my um, hip hop classes. And I got to see the power of dance transform not only myself and heal myself and be like, oh, whoa, like this is who I am, this is who I've been. Um, but I got to see it transform other people. Like the power of dance is incredible. I could have a whole nother talk about that. But I had to, yeah, basically rewrite this formula and make it work for me and just lean into it. So maybe something, you know, didn't quite work out for you, but again, see it as a new opportunity to do something different. And my last lesson for you guys is move. We're just gonna watch Little Let Me Do That right now. <laughs> Creepily. So this is me and my adventurous life. I used to live, I used to work on small vessel cruise ships. So this is us when we were docked in Mexico, Baja, Mexico. We were waiting for the guests to come back from an excursion. So this is just my, my friend on like the top deck capturing me being goofy. But yeah, you can't help but even laugh, right? Giggle a little bit when you like watch somebody do something like that. Cause there's something really powerful about movement. Um, and it's really exciting because like, I am a mover, so it's like I'm naturally inclined to like want to move and want to do stuff, right? Um, but it's not a dance versus movement, it's just movement in general that, that can really um, trigger a lot of different things. Because basically your body, your body's capacity to want to become something more and become something greater innately is like infinite. So. When we move, we trigger a whole cascade of chemicals, right? Hormones, neurotransmitters, sending signals to our body to be something more, to be something greater, to feel greater, right? We all know this, and it's fun because I get to teach, I teach a class called Stress Reduction Through Movement at UNT, and I get to see these kids transform in front of my eyes by making them do things, and I'm like, ha ha, you know? But granted, you know, sometimes it's stuck in this woo-woo world, right? Or artsy world. But there's so much science nowadays to back all of, this, all of these studies up, right? So, you know, I talked about the happy chemicals and neurotransmitters that when they're, when you simply move, those start triggering, right? And it's not just about feeling good. It's literally like, there's research done by just simply taking a walk. It's the equivalent of taking an antidepressant. So instead of popping a pill, just go for a walk. Your body has the capacity to do that for you. And then there's studies around, you know, chemicals in your brain that help reduce pain. So if you feel like you want to complain, like, oh, my back, my this, well, just start moving a little bit. Get the juices going, start lubing up those joints and you'll feel the difference. And there's also studies about memory and information processing. So we're talking about brain health and actually how you can engage with the world more and better because you're just simply moving. So I want to do a little test. Everybody stand up. Let's go. Spread out a little bit. I just want to make sure you guys don't hit each other. Feel free to use the open spaces. 
So I'm going to call this the TTS. I do this with my students a lot. <laughs> the tap, twist, shake. Okay. But first, we're going to welcome ourselves to this space. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is just kind of think about your body as a whole unit. And I want you to start looking around the room. So right, clearly you can look around the room with your eyeballs. But I want you to use your whole body. So like, hey, if I'm looking at that corner, my chest is there. Right, if I'm looking up at the ceiling, my chest is following. So maybe like, you can think of it as looking with your body or your chest. Look around the space, really think about, you know, how your body is really open and receptive to this space. Ooh, yeah, you guys are getting a little stretchy action here, right? Be curious if you make contact with somebody, I mean eye contact, give them a smile. It's okay, look at that, oh. Okay, so we're giggling already, perfect. All right, so now let's center ourselves, right? What we're gonna do is really make some strong fingers, okay, in cups, and we're gonna start tapping right underneath our collarbones. This is actually a meridian point in our body, and it activates, um, again, triggering of chemicals in our brain, in our body. Okay, and then we're gonna tap underneath our armpits. So hopefully you guys are doing it with both hands because I can only do one. I don't want to bash the microphone on each other. Right, yep, and you might, yeah, it, it's easier to do, sorry, one at a time for your underarms. <laughs> okay, terrible at this, one-handed. Okay, and then you're gonna tap, oh yes, okay. <laughs> The lower part of Travis! Travis, there you go. Oh. <laughs> Travis will look like Sandwich. Okay, tapping the back. Tapping our butt. Oh, yeah. Hey, butt. I'm just going to make guys sit on this all the time. And then we're going to tap down the sides of our legs. So outside of our legs. And then coming up through the inside of our legs. Inside of our legs. One more time. Nice and firm. Okay. All right. Now we're going to twist. Twist. Okay, so make sure you don't hit anything. And feel free to have a nice loose, loose arms, spaghetti arms. And sometimes you might have a little tap. You can have a little tap right to the back of your lower part of your back. Okay, now we're going to shake. We're going to start with our hands. Shake out your hands like you got water on them, and you're like, oh, get it off, get it off, get it off. Okay. And while you're shaking, why don't you just wave at somebody? Hey, what's up? <laughs> if you're close to somebody, give them a little high five. Come on, man. Yo! That's a proper shaking, right? Okay, shaking our legs. Again, water, get it off. Get that water off. Shaking your butt. Here we go again. Make it jiggle. Make it jiggle. Let's go. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Okay. Shake, 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 shake. This is my favorite. When you shake your head, open your mouth and let your tongue just flap around. <laughs> and you can make that. Uh, uh. All right. Whew. Center, center. Come back to center. I want everybody to close their eyes. Soften your knees. Have a nice tall spine as if something's pulling from the top. And just sit in this energy that you made. This is your body becoming more. Rising, expanding. You created this energy in your body, your life force, your electrochemical magic. You feel that? That's you. We're going to go ahead and take some deep breaths into our nose, out through our mouth, in through our nose, bless you, out through your mouth, one last one, in through our nose, out through our mouth, you can open your eyes.
Welcome back to reality. <laughs> okay, so I get you can go ahead and sit down. But I am curious. I usually like to get adjectives of how people feel. So can I have three people tell me one adjective of how they feel right now? Just shout it out. Exuberated. Ex exuberated? Invigorated. Invigorated. Ooh, that's a good one. Electric. Electric and alive. Woo! Look at that. We didn't even I didn't even make you dance. <laughs> but I made you move and you guys feel different. Look at that. You guys are rising already. Look at that. It's incredible. Your body is incredible. Woo! So as a reminder, we're summing it up, summing it up. Examine and rewriting a story about yourself. Are you saying things that are helpful to who you actually want to be? If not, change it. Change it. Just change it. Even if it's brainwashing yourself, just do it. Embracing when the formula fails. <sighs> Disappointment is always going to come in life, so it's just about you leaning into it and seeing it as an opportunity to do something different. And then move. Maybe you're thinking of too much. Maybe you're stuck in here. Just get back in here and just do the little TTS. Tap, twist, shake. Tap, twist, shake. Everybody, tap, twist, shake. That's it. I'm not asking you to do choreography, right? And so, yeah, my blessing and my wish for you is that you guys rise in your own way. Be more of you. Become more expansive. Be your better self. And so, if you want to follow me on Instagram, Shameless plug, feel free. I talk a lot more on that. Um, you can email me, this is all my information. But for me, um, I will say that I'm actively looking for more speaking engagements. So if you guys, you know, need some people to, for me to talk at, <laughs> I would love that. That's my, again, process of becoming more of who I am, taking up space. And so, yeah, I just really thank you guys for, for indulging me and, and, you know, hopefully that you were able to take something away from this and thank you again for your ears. <laughs> Ten minutes. Okay. Question questions? Oh gosh, I don't think we've ever I feel like most talks like go to the end, so that was quite timely. Arigato. Any questions? Yes. Oh God, that's putting me on the spot. What? She asked me, she said, can you show us some of your dance? I mean, like, I'm capable of doing that, but it's really like putting me on the spot. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I need some music. I need some music. I will perform, but I need music. So if Nikki can hook it up, I'll do something. But any other questions? Kevin? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin, come on, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You're right. I mean, hopefully you guys are breathing through it. It's kind of hard not to breathe, but yes, breath is breath is like your life force. So, hundred percent always tap into that. I know, and it is movement because your lungs are expanding, so we don't think about it as movement, but it is. Yes? Have you forgiven little Emmy for being <gasps> Have you forgiven? Oh, hell yes. I was actually on my way here to this talk because this talk, I was like, I wanted to do this for, ever since I came to Creative Mornings, I was like, I want to be a speaker. And so when I was driving here, actually, I was like, little Emmy, I'm so proud of you. And I was talking to her and hyping her up in the car. I'm getting a little teary. Um, so, yeah, this is like, again, my whole process of rising. And I'm fucking doing it. I'm fucking doing it. <laughs> so, yeah, I have. Yes? How do you see yourself becoming even more expansive as you age? Oh, my gosh. Well, luckily, like, I try to tap into wise old Emmy often. And I, like, try to think of who she is and, like, try to really embody her. I mean, I'm into all the woo stuff, like visualization, meditation, kind of manifestation stuff. And so I, I don't do it frequently enough, but I definitely try to like sit with her and feel her and try to put myself in her shoes and know that she's like 
there, I guess. But at the same time, I also, my most recent affirmation is I am who I already am meant to be. So at the same time, I'm like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't spend time with her. I am already here. So yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. question. More questions. That's a good question. So she asked him how, like, my basically my relationship with my hair, how has that changed me? Um, yeah, it changed me significantly, especially as like, a mover and dancer. Like, hairography is a thing, first of all. Um, and so when I was like at my prime teaching and dancing, and because I was like dancing, I was dancing all over the place. I was like dancing. I danced in Japan, I danced in the UK, I danced in London. Um, and so, like, once um, basically I got alopecia after I got divorced. So around like 29 at this point. Um, but I've had it for like nine, eight years now. Um, so yeah, the biggest thing that happened was that, yeah, I, I don't even know how we're gonna start. But so when I was married to my husband, he liked short hair. And so when I got divorced, I was like, oh, I'm gonna grow my hair long, I'm gonna go for it. And also it was like awesome, because again, hairography. And then once, I started sitting into more singlehood, <laughs> like, yeah, I started getting alopecia, started coming out, started coming out. And so that was like kind of like, um, yeah, it kind of taught me a lesson where I was like, oh, wow, like, my body's showing me something, first of all. And then second of all, it really changed how I needed to show up. Like, women, you know, we we really love our hair because it is another expression of ourselves. So it, it was like almost like the universe was like, look, you got to show up just the way that you are. You can't hide behind anything anymore. So it was kind of for me to embrace that, like, okay, like, this is me. This is literally me, you know? Um, and so I'm still manifesting that my hair is going to come back all glorious and beautiful again. So it's just, you know, when, it's a matter of when at this point. Um, but yeah, it really has changed me. But having had alopecia now for a long time, I've like really settled into it. And honestly, it's great for branding because like, how do you not remember my face? <laughs> Creative entrepreneur, like it's great marketing here. This is my brand. Take a picture. <laughs> you got that? Yeah, you got that. You got that. So yeah, pros and cons to everything. Like, how do I rewrite that story to serve me? And oh, so to answer your question, if you do want some movement of me. <laughs> You want to watch me move? I do have some clips on my Instagram, so yeah. Well, oh yeah, we're doing good on time, Nikki. Okay. Do you teach any dance or movement classes? Oh, so I teach. Well, so I said I, I teach at UNT, so I do teach hip hop um, at UNT right now. I don't do any community classes because I kind of was I don't know. I don't. Mm, I don't is the short answer, but I do want to start teaching classes. But I mostly like facilitating spaces around movement versus teaching choreography. And so I'm really trying to find a sweet spot of how to serve the dance community or the greater community in that way. So to be deep, I mean TBD to be written. Oh, yes. Yes. Because like, you know, I, I do want to, this is like the power of dance is so phenomenal to me. Like it's like when I see other dancers like doing their thing, I'm like, are you, sh are you shitting me? Like your, sit your value is so undeniable. And so that's why I'm really passionate about arts entrepreneurship. Because if the dancers can understand their value and they can feed into the community and we can create more spaces and have more opportunities where we're like being inspired to move in our own bodies, right? Um, more expanded. Um, but I will say like the second, I have it in the second half of my year where I'm like, I'm just gonna do creative projects. So it might be a creative trial. I could do a creative trial where I open up some classes around movement just for yes. whoever wants to move. Okay, we yeah, got some signups already. So, you know, follow me, <laughs> follow me on the socials to, to see this news unfold. But yeah, I mean, I love movement. 
and again, I say movement and movement artists because like dance, again, there's like this connotation that you have to be like this expert master level, but we're all movers. You were a dancer, right? Most people probably did a dance class or athlete, sports, whatever, right? Like we're all movers. When you're babies, you roll around. Movement is in our DNA, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Any other? Are we good on time? Three minutes. Oh my God. Still time for you to dance. Oh my God. Oh, question again. Oh my gosh. Yes, I will speak about those. So currently, there's two different things that I. Okay, three different things that I'm working on right now. So one of them is I'm currently part of the Leadership Arts Institute of the North Texas Business Council for the Arts. That's a lot of words. Um, and, but basically, what we're doing as a cohort is we're creating this um, Arts Entrepreneurship One Day Conference, um, really about educating and supporting artists to be entrepreneurs. So if any of you all want to come, it's going to be on June 1st at SMU. I know, SMU heads. Um, and so, yeah, that's in the works. So I'm, I'm one of the co-chairs of the project, so I get to uh, yeah, guide the ship, but also because I'm an artist and embody the, the struggles, um, I get to kind of curate the program to really help the needs of the artistic community. Um, the second thing that's happening is I'm really, again, arts entrepreneurship is my jam. Um, and so I'm trying to um, create an arts entrepreneurship course at UNT to house um, or to serve the arts um, students there because the music school has its thing going on. They have an MBA program, so they're very business savvy already. But with the other artists performing and visual, there, there isn't a lot of um, support, so I'm trying to curate that. But man, there's a lot of bureaucracy. So I'm facing some struggles. So if anybody has any ideas about how to <laughs> make this happen, I'm all ears. Um, and then the last thing I'm working on is, so with my old business coach, um, her and I are business partners now and are creating um, in early works of creating more spaces for women artists, entrepreneurs in particular, um, mostly around, um, I mean, women, I'm a woman, um, I'm a mom, and so all of these things that kind of define creative women entrepreneurs, um, we're trying to create spaces to really support their needs in particular, and we're really leaning towards um, in-person retreats, so kind of like artist retreats to help really um, embody our artistry, but then also take that to the next level where we're actually acting and um, yeah, creating a business around it. So those are the three things that I'm cooking up. So, yeah. Thank you so much.